Here's another example, another application of the conservation of linear momentum theorem. We'll study something called the ballistic pendulum. It's a very useful problem and something that will come up a lot. So let's title every aspect of this problem. So what's going on in the problem is very, you know, so let's understand this. You have a bullet of mass m. You have a bullet of mass m that is moving to the right with speed v. The bullet is going to collide against a block, a large block of mass capital M that is initially at rest. This block is attached to a string, attached by a string to a ceiling. The length of the string is L. Now what's going to happen is that the bullet is going to get embedded in the block and then once it gets embedded, the block bullet is going to swing up. And our goal is to figure out the angle theta that the block bullet system makes or rather the maximum angle theta that this block bullet system will make. Now in this problem we are finding the angle theta. In other situations the angle theta could be given and then we can trace our step back and try to figure out the speed v. So you know if you go in one direction it's very it's you know very straightforward to go back in the other direction. So let's figure out again what what are all the things that are happening. The first thing that's going to happen is the collision. So that you know let's bullet this out. So first you're going to have the collision. Okay, now we have to figure out what concept can I use in the collision. Always make sure that you ask that question. And then the next thing is the swing. Okay, and again we'll do what concept can I use for the swing? Can I use the same concept for both? Uh, can I, or do I have to use different concepts? All that will become very clear. In fact, we know how to deal with the swing. You've already done that in the previous chapter. But the collision is something new that we'll deal with. Okay, so Here's another question that we ask. Let's first deal with the collision. Now, the bullet is moving towards the block with some speed v. It has momentum mv. Okay, the block is at rest. Now, when the bullet collides with the block, what's happening is the forces are internal. Okay, the net external force on the system is zero. You see, in the beginning, gravity is simply cancelled by the, the tension and all that. So, gravity doesn't come into play. The bullet gets embedded in the block and those forces are simply internal and the net external force is zero. So once again, since the net external force is zero, we can use the, we can use ME, uh, sorry, we can use PI equals PF. So for the collision, we're going to use momentum conservation theorem, PI equals PF. Okay. And once again, the reason is because the net external force is zero. So no net external force. Okay, that is equal to zero. So I can use PI equals PF. Now, the problem is very simple. Let's figure out the initial momentum first. In the beginning, we have the momentum for the bullet, which is MV, and the momentum for the block is simply M times zero, because it is not moving, it's at rest. In the end, what we know is that the bullet gets embedded in the block. As a result, they both have the same velocity, common velocity. So I could write it two ways. One is I could say that they both have the same velocity, which is which makes it MVF plus capital MVF. Okay. Or we could also say that hey, since they're moving as one unit, okay, we could treat them as M plus capital M times VF. In fact, algebraically you see that the, this middle part simply leads to that. Okay. So you can think of it either ways and it'll give you the same answer. Now, once we have this, what we know now is that MV is equal to M plus capital M times VF. And now we have we have VF. VF is equal to MV divided by M plus capital M. All right, great. We have the speed. So this is, so to realize this, for the first part, the collision part, we used momentum conservation. All right, now, here's another problem, okay? Now, the second part of the problem is something like this. You have a pendulum of mass M plus capital M because they're moving as one unit and that is moving with a speed V. And the length of the pendulum is L and we are asking, hey, what is the maximum angle that this is going to make? Okay, so again, ask yourself this question. What concept can we use? All right, pause it right now and figure out. All right, so let's assume that you've, you've done this. You've paused it. Now you thought about the concept. If you look at the swing up, okay, it's very simple. We're going to use MEI equals MEF. Now let's apply MEI equals MEF. Now in order to do that, what we'll do is before we find the angle theta, it's easier to find the height h that it rises by. Let's find this height h. Once we know the height h, we can then find the angle theta using a little bit of geometry. 
Now, in the beginning, the blocks have a have kinetic energy only. So my MEI is composed of the kinetic energy of the blocks only. Okay, no potential. Now, once it has swung to its maximum height, then it has no kinetic and all potential. So M plus M times G times H. Okay, so the MMs, the, the masses cancel out, and so we get H is equal to VF square divided by G. And if you realize, if you look at VF square, sorry, divided by 2G, and VF is nothing but MV over, so it is MV over M plus capital M square and 1 over 2G. So this is the height that it reaches. Now, once we know this, okay, let us do some basic geometry. Let's try to figure out the angle theta, given that this height is h. If the length of the string is l, what we know is this, within the small triangle, this length is equal to l cosine of theta. And that tells us that h is equal to the total length l minus l cosine of theta. Great. We are in business now. And we can write this as L times 1 minus cosine of theta is equal to H. So 1 minus cosine of theta is equal to H over L. Okay, one more step. Cosine theta is 1 minus H over L. Okay, and here now we can plug in the values for H and obtain the rest of the stuff. So this is equal to 1 minus 1 over 2G times MV over M plus capital M square okay all over l and once we know this we can find theta as simply cosine inverse of this entire expression okay which is nothing but 1 minus mb over m plus capital m square and i can write this as 1 over 2 gl great so this is how we can find the maximum angle theta in the problem so here's an application of the conservation of linear momentum for the collision and then mechanical energy conservation theorem for determining the maximum angle theta. So again, you have to realize that in one problem, you, there are several things going on, and we'll try to tackle all those things. All right, awesome. So that's the end of this problem.